Hello and welcome to this month's watercolor painting tutorial. This month we're going to paint a still life, some dandelions in a glass jar with a couple of apples and some intense lighting. So we have a really dark background and then these popping out light white dandelions with the light green stems. We're going to have some trouble with some, um, or some learning, not necessarily trouble, with reflections in glass, water, and on this smooth tabletop. So let's get started. I've taped off some watercolor paper and stretched it and stapled it to a board here. And then I've done most of the work of drawing the still life. So I, have, I used a ruler to make my tabletop edge nice and straight. And then I've been working on making my shapes on top of it, the apples and the dandelions and I'm going to do a little bit of modification here because this apple looks a little bit too square so I'll change it. I just like to draw on watercolor paper with a two eight, um, an HB pencil. I like to use an HB pencil to draw on my watercolor paper so it's soft and visible but the watercolor can still go over it. And sometimes your watercolor is not going to go over it completely, so you'll be able to see some pencil lines. And that's just, it's really just part of it. Even in professionals hanging in galleries, you can often see the pencil lines underneath your watercolors. So don't fret too much about that. Just a little bit of an indication of this glass rim. the water level and then I need to work on adding some of these stems there's a lot of dandelions in this glass so I'm just taking some time adding some stems And then up here, so stems need to continue. You know, honestly, I'm not being that finicky about where the stems go. If you want to, you can take a long time and get all those stems, making sure they're going the right place, but I just want to get enough detail that it gives the impression of a full glass jar of dandelions. And after that point, I'll just let the viewer, the viewer's eye fill in the rest of the detail. Okay, so once the drawing is down, I'm going to use some masking fluid just because there's a really dark and distinct edge, a contrast between the light and the dark in this painting and there's a lot of fiddly edges in those dandelions, I'm going to take some miscuit or uh, masking fluid and protect the dandelions. Not the whole dandelion, but I want some of those pokes, the outer edge, to stand out. Then when I'm painting, I'm going to make sure not to cover the white parts, but it's really the dark parts that I don't 
it's really this edge, I mean, that I don't want to have to go around. I don't want those edges to be completely gone, but I don't want it to paint around them. So we do this and then fill in the stems so that everything is covered with masking fluid. And then the other thing that I might do is for some of these larger white circles, I might protect the whole thing with masking, um, with frisket film, which is like a tape paper. And it works better for larger things because you have to cut it out in those shapes. Let me just protect these small shapes first and see what I think. Okay, so I'm going to go off screen and uh, finish doing the masking fluid on these stems and some of the puffs. Come back to you and we'll start painting. Okay, I wound up protecting a ton of this actually. I protected all of the elements with masking fluid and with frisket foam. And you don't have to do that, but I'm going to show you why I chose to do that. We're gonna start here in the background, and I also want to keep this line of the, um, I wanna keep the line of the table that they're all sitting on perfectly straight. So I'm going to put a piece of tape. What I'm using here is just a blue painter's tape. Push it down nice and firm. You don't want any of that paint seeping under there. Then, I'm gonna get a sponge ready, looks like this. Get my water ready. And what we have in the background here is really interesting textured wall. So let's approximate that the, as best we can without getting too fussy. If you've watched my tutorials before, you know what I always say, better that it's interesting than accurate. And that is completely true. So in this case too, I'm just going to slap some water down here, knowing that everything is protected and I don't have to be careful. And the water is in a textured pattern, so not smooth. Then I'm going to mix up some bluey gray colors. And I like to use these pieces of scrap watercolor paper to test my colors on before I've committed them to the board. Yeah, I'm getting some interesting stuff there. So, now away we go. I'm just going to brush in some interesting stuff like this. Got a few different shades of blue cleaned up, or uh, mixed up rather. I've got some blues and some grays, and I'm just getting them all on that background.
Then while it's still wet, I'm going to drop in a really dark Payne's Gray and let it puddle up, especially around the edges that I've protected on those flowers because the darker I go there, the more the contrast will pop out. And that contrast is what draws the eye. So it's really interesting, makes it really eye-catching, and that's what we want. Then get your sponge and do some of that work with the sponge as well. The sponge isn't going to work as well while the paint is this wet, but I just want to show you how you can kind of break up uh, the color that you've got there and make it a little bit more modulated. All about making it interesting. So I look to my reference material a bit, but it's really more for just referring to the general color, the general patterns, the general shapes of contrasts on the board. I'm, I'm really not trying to copy what I see there too much. Then I have this kind of golden ochre that's in here too. And I really like having the different colored contrast there, so I'm going to add some of that as well. See how I'm just kind of shoop, 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 shoop with my brush. Now, when you're doing something like this, you need to make sure that you put it in at least three places. So we've added some red to the background here. I'm going to need to add some reds in the reflections as well. That will help to unify your painting and it will help to make sure that you don't create any weird targets. Like, oh, that's a weird orange patch. One orange patch, that's why did they do that? Okay, we, we don't want that. We don't want the viewer to even subconsciously be thinking that. And also remember that your painting is going to dry at least two shades lighter. So I'm going to bump in with some more intense Payne's Grays. Soften it up with just a bit of my sponge work here. Don't cover everything that you just put down. Yeah, I'm working especially around those stems and things. And when you're working, make sure that you squint so that you can see the pattern of light and dark. On the reference material, down here is really dark. Up here, it's lighter. Back here, it's a little lighter, then dark again. So we have kind of a semicircle of darkness. The light is picked up down here as well, and then of course these really bright patches of the dandelions themselves. So we don't want everything to be dark. We need there to be some variation. Always variation. And see since I have everything protected, this step becomes really fun and joyful to do. Dropping in a few more of those reds one more time before they all fade away. And then we're going to let this dry. Come back to it when that's all nice and dry. Alright, my background is done here and it looks fabulous. I'm going to peel off my tape. it kept a nice clean edge. So now before I take off any of this other masking fluid, I'm going to tape the top and then we're going to work on this reflective surface down here. So get a fresh piece of tape. Don't reuse your tape because just pulling it off is going to remove enough adhesive that you, n you might not get a clean seal and that would be terrible.
because then you get just a little bit of paint seeping through and that defeats the whole purpose. Make sure that the edges around the fruit are all very, very nice and neat and really tamped down. Just like that. Then, I think I'm going to add a little bit more brown and some red tones to my tabletop. Let's focus in here a little bit. The tabletop is going to be just a little bit trickier because we're going to have those fruit reflections on it. So first, I'll just use a clean brush and get a nice even coat of water to help my colors flow together. I don't want the water puddling up anywhere, but I just want it to be evenly wet. Good, and then go in really dark. Especially between the fruit, it's really, really dark. And then see how I'm leaving edges for the fruit to have the reflections. But this sort of thing is just really tricky because you don't want too much bleed, but you really need to keep it all wet so it will flow together so ugh, this is part is really frustrating for you you're not alone it's even frustrating for me and I've been doing this for years so just do the best you can I've got yellow apples so we're gonna have yellow in that reflection I'm gonna get my yellow on the brush that color is still wet, drop in the yellow. And then in the vase area, we're going to have some yellows and some greens from those dandelion stems. And then it has some rounds because the stems are sort of that pink color. Not too much detail though, you've got to fight the impulse to put in too much detail. I'm going to add just a little bit more color to the apple reflection here.
Okay, so I have my base tones in and now I can go back around into it with a little bit of darker tone like this, especially on the underside of the fruit. That will help it to look. Uh, that will help the fruit and the vase to look grounded on the table. Okay, when you've pushed that as far as you want, then just let that dry. All right, let's take off the tape and all of our masking fluid and protection now. So you can see how we did. Looks like we got some on the fruit. Ugh. Despite your best efforts, sometimes it's just gonna seep through. But I'll show you how to deal with that as best we can. And there's actually some easy patch-up remedies. So if this happened to you, don't worry about it. We'll clean it up. Okie dokie. to clean up the edges. I do that with a flat angled shader like this. I like to use stiff brushes so they have actually these really stiff nylon brushes that you can buy at craft stores or online through art stores but they do tend to rip up your paper. So I prefer to use the soft bristle angled shader. Just get a clean paper towel ready or a napkin or a tissue during this cleanup phase, you're going to dip your water in the clean water. You're going to dip your brush in the clean water, and then you're going to rub out the messy edge like this, and then you're going to blot it dry, and that gets up all of that residue as well. I have to clean up all of these edges, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to start painting the vase and the fruit. So just give me a little bit of time here, rubbing, blotting, 
and we will come back to it together. Okay, that is as cleaned up as I can get it. So now we're going to start adding the greens to this piece. I need a round brush. This is my favorite for this sort of work. And I need a flat brush. So I'm gonna use a half inch flat, mix up some yellows and greens, and then start painting these apples. Really light color at first. So I'm sort of washing away any other little paint pigments that might, might be on there. See how we get these little things. And then I'm going to go in more darkly on the shadow side. Just take your time around the edges and when it comes to that darkest shadow you can be a little bit faster like this. I just want there to be a nice blend of different colors on everything that I paint so don't paint a yellow apple just yellow. Make sure that you bounce into it with some blues, some reds, whatever different mixes you want. Down here is the shadow on this apple, and I'm going to have to clean these up again, but this is just the base of the apples. Let's also go in with some ochre. Oh, that didn't turn out to be ochre, did it? I want some yellow ochre on my yellow apples. I'm going to drop it around in places all over like this. Good, so those are looking a little bit more interesting. So I just kind of throw some different colors on there and let them mix together on the board. That's going to make an interesting watercolor at the end. So you always want to make it interesting. Remember, more important to be ac it's more important to be interesting than accurate. So if you wind up with a really cool looking apple that doesn't look exactly like the apple in your photograph, no one should care, especially not you. The important thing to remember is that you made an interesting looking apple. Okay, you're an artist, not a photographer trying to get the exact same thing that you see in nature or that you see on a photograph copied onto a sheet of paper. You can use Xerox machines for that. Okay, so then in these stems, I'm going to go to my round brush. And I'm going to throw them down, paying attention to the reference so I can see where each stem needs to go and what's in the foreground and what is being pushed behind.
So what I see on these dandelion stems is that they're not all the same shade of yellow. There's some green ones, some light yellows, some darker yellows, some lime colored, and some brown colored. So I'm trying to get a good mix in here. And I'm trying to touch each one only the once because if I re-wet that really dark background, the paint will reactivate and it will start to smear together. So let me paint these stems off camera. Come back to you when the stems are dry and it's ready to push forward. To paint the stems that are in the water glass, you're going to do the same sort of process here, except you need to keep a lot of light. So I'm just going to start down here below the water line, and then I see it just kind of a cluster of these green stems right about here and some different greens that come together. Not necessarily that it can see the individual stem pieces. But so when I paint glass, I'm looking for the shape of the highlights so that I can paint around them. And then here and there, you need to have a bend because glass bends the light and it will bend the shapes. So you need to make it look realistic like water by bending your shapes as well. So you don't have just straight stems going down into the water glass all straight and even. Okay, you need to break it up like this. And then at the water edge, you're going to see a break there too and some strong highlights. So you can either protect that with masking fluid or you can paint around it like I am. If you're gonna paint around it, then just take your time and make sure that you're not painting above that edge. So my edge here, this is highlight right in this area right here. You can redraw it like that too so that you don't forget where it is. But there really isn't a fast or there's, there's not a fast tricky way of doing this. You just really need to take your time, pay close attention to what you see. and paint down as carefully as you can. And then remember the tips of dandelions change color quite a bit. They have sort of pink tips. So for those pink tips, don't forget to make that reflected in your drawing. Um, so don't forget to paint those. I might even want to start with a few of those tips like this. And then either while that's wet or when it's mostly dry but a little bit damp, you can flood in the green color of the upper stem and they should mix together pretty convincingly. Okay, so let me take some time and paint this water glass the same way and I'll come back to you. All right, the stems are still a little wet, but I wanted to show you how to go ahead and fill in the uh, heads on the dandelions. So I'm just going to get some brown on my brush and then stipple a little bit of a center like this. So you have some dark spots and some light spots and a lot of white space in between. On some of those, it's going to be a darker brown. On others, it's going to be more of a gray but it's the same process for any for all the dandelions. 
So over here, it's a lot lighter. And then I can add some of the gray tone to some of the brown ones and help to have two colors. There's just not a lot else to this dandelion. The center though really helps it to make it look like what it is. Don't go too slowly when you stipple or you're going to make it look too uh, deliberate. Like something with little polka dots on it. Okay, you're, you don't want that look. And sometimes I can even start to see just the beginnings of the little stems. So you might have a few little lines as well. Then I'm going to mostly rinse the brush out, get just a little bit of gray, and I'm going to do the same thing in the body of the dandelion like this, so that I get the sense of some of those puff balls. So I want to add some dimension to each dandelion. but I don't want to have to take forever. So I'm just giving a little indication of something going on on the surface here. And then I'm gonna call it good. So I'll do a little bit more of work on that in a bit, but I wanted to show you once the vase is dry, I'm going to look for those really sharp reflective surfaces on the glass and I'm going to protect them on the vase with some masking fluid. So I've got highlights on the glass and then I have some highlights on the stems themselves. So just look for all of those little lines and those little shapes, put them in. Then when we come back and the masking fluid is dry, I'll show you how to finish the glass and the puff balls in these dandelions should be farther along as well. So let me do that and come back to you.